Good morning! It's Friday! Yay! I'm so excited that it is Friday and I am showing you my new mug that I got from actually a Kern and Flourish is the company and she's been doing my graphics for me. If you've noticed graphics that I've had on um, uh, Instagram and Facebook with hand lettering and um, this cup, this mug says it's a marshmallow world and it is my hope that soon it will feel more like it's the time of year when it would be a marshmallow world. But right now it is going to be 82 today in Tennessee. Very, very warm. I'm so not used to the South and this what we call fall I'm not used to it and um, yesterday I wore leggings in the morning and I guess it was kind of chilly and I thought you know, I'm gonna do it and then by last night I changed into shorts I did this funny post on my Instagram I'm the money saving mom on Instagram and I was just like I tried I really tried leggings but I give in and I give up because I was sweating so um, so I know I'm ready for tights boots and sweaters so um Alrighty, so welcome, so glad to have you here today. Fridays are our fun day where we just um, hang out and there's a lot more interaction and um, I do Q&A and it's just a lot more chit chatty. So for those of you who love those types of scopes, Friday is your day. Um, but first off, a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, one is that I feel like I haven't hardly got to interact with you all this week and I feel like I had so much information that I wanted to share and then didn't get to interact because I just, if I start paying attention to your comments, I get on this rabbit trail and that's not good. So thank you so much for your patience and I'm excited that finally um, we can get to interact. Um, and I also wanted to mention for those of you who may have missed, um, we are starting Rising Strong by Brene Brown on Monday. So that is our book club book starting on Monday. You always look so good so early. Um, it's called Knowing That I Have to Get on Scope. Gets me out of bed and gets me to make sure that I look decent. Um, because do I scope on the weekends? Um, it depends. And I don't think, I was planning to maybe scope tomorrow, but I don't know that I'm going to because um, Catherine has a swim meet and that's going to take up most of our day. So I think I'm going to um, just not scope tomorrow. But I am going to scope this afternoon at 3 p.m. I'm going to do a Money Making Mom scope and it will be on um, and, and ask me anything related to business and blogging and all of that. And I'm going to give away a copy of my new book money making mom so if you would like to win a copy of my book money making mom i will be giving one away um in my scope this afternoon so for those of you who are new my name is crystal payne and i'm the founder of moneysavingmom.com as well as the new york times best-selling author of the book say goodbye to survival mode and the creator of the 14-day online course called make over your mornings and that's at makeoveryourmornings.com i am also wife to jesse we've been married for almost 13 years. It'll be 13 years in January. I can't believe it. And we have three kids. Um, they're 10, 8, and 6. I had to think about that for a second. And um, we live in the Nashville, Tennessee area. And we are self-employed entrepreneurs and we homeschool our kids. You pre-ordered last night. Thank you so much. You all, thank you for pre-ordering that. Um, Thomas Nelson, my publisher, set a goal that if we could hit this certain goal, then they felt like Amazon would, would buy enough to have enough stock for launch week. And you all are making that happen and we're almost to the goal. So we're really excited. Um, Alrighty, so then I also wanted to, oh, I told you that I was going to give you a time management tip that I learned this week that I should have learned a lot, long time ago, but I am just learning it. And that was this week I said that I was going to work on timeliness and being more timely with getting on Periscope, which I'm still a work in progress with that, but I did a lot better this week. Um, and I realized when I was focusing on timeliness this week and really making that a priority that I do a horrible job at planning ahead in the sense of I always think that it's going to be so, it's going to take so much less time. And I think that's because I have a very optimistic personality. And so I will think, oh, I can get done 
I can get that done in 20 minutes. Oh, it only takes me 25 minutes to do that. When really it takes me 45 minutes, or at least I should allow 45 minutes. And so that's the thing that I really learned this week is to plan a lot more time than I think it's going to take. And as I'm doing that some and trying to get better at that, it is making such a big difference. I've been early to places this week and feeling ahead and that is fantastic. So I'm working on that and I'm hoping that maybe I'm going to break these lifelong habits of kind of being a last minute productive procrastinator. I get a lot done, but I'm productively procrastinating. So I'm working on that. Um, yeah, forget the prep time or travel time. You all think, oh yeah, I just, you know, hop in the car, but then you forget you gotta gather up the stuff and then maybe you can't find your keys or you can't find your phone or, or whatever it is. And so like this morning, or no, last night, I went ahead and I sat out everything that I need for going today. I'm taking um, Catherine to her swimming this afternoon and everything that I need for that, I set it out ahead of time. And then just thinking through the steps and really paying attention to how long do things take me. That's another thing that I'm realizing I think it only takes me 12 minutes, but it actually takes me 17. And so to stop um, underestimating and instead overestimate until I can be better at guesstimating because I'm not very good at that clearly. Um, okay, so I wanted to share that and I also wanted to share one quick quote. This is, we are in the final, um, the final section of I used to be so organized. I put up the final post for this on moneysavingmom.com early this morning. I got up way early this morning because I just couldn't sleep last night. I went to bed early, couldn't sleep, so I got up. But so that's on moneysavingmom.com um, if you want to go there and also um, if you would like to leave comments on what you learned if you're reading through the book with me. So I wanted to read this final, from the final section, this final paragraph. No matter how many times you've tried to get organized before, know that today is a brand new day. Leave behind your past failures and weaknesses. You are the only one who places limits on your ability or disqualifies you because of your past. So that really challenged me to think about, okay, I'm the only one who places limits on my ability or disqualifies myself because of my past. So today is the best day to start. So just start today. Um, okay, so I wanted to mention that um, I have, no, there have been a lot of questions that when we do an Ask Me Anything, a lot of questions that I miss because I'm answering someone else. And so um, I wanted to say, to encourage you, if you type out a question, can you go ahead and copy it so that it's saved? So in case I don't see it, then when you think there's gonna be another lull or there's no one putting up a question, you can paste it in. So copy it. So if you have to paste it in um, three or four times, just be persistent and hopefully I will see it. Cause I feel badly if I, I've been missing a lot of questions and that's because I can't read comments and block people and think and talk coherently at the same time. So I kind of have to compartmentalize a little bit. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be a squirrel on here. So if you are new here today, um, I would love for you to introduce yourself, tell us um, your name and maybe where you're from. And I'd love to um, give you a shout out. And if anyone has any questions, the floor is yours. So you can ask anything specifically about, I would say family, organization. I mean, you can ask anything about anything, but this afternoon it's gonna be more um, business and blogging. So if you can make that scope, save your business and blogging questions for that. Um, makeover, your mornings have been transformed. When does makeover your evenings come around? Guess what? We are working on that and we hope to have that in 2016. It's a process and it's gonna take some time, but I'm really excited that we're starting the ball rolling for our Makeover Your Evenings course for so many of you who have asked. What I read in the Bible today, I am reading in Colossians. I will show you. Um, doing the She Reads Truth um, study in Colossians today. And so today it was, um, Colossians 2, 8 through 15, plus some other passages. And um, 
really was just challenged about God's amazing grace. Um, this verse especially, and you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. So that really challenged me and I was, I sent it to a friend who's struggling with a lot of shame and guilt right now and just said, he canceled it on the cross for you, took it all, nailed it to the cross, and you don't have to carry it around anymore. So that's what I was challenged with this morning. Great question. Do you hope to do the She Reads Truth? Yes. If they are bringing back the Black Envelope program in 2016, absolutely. I'm going to ask for that for Christmas again. Suggestions on keeping pick pictures from iPhone, print them. Sure. You know, for pictures, I'm, I'm really terrible, but um, most of the time I put the ones that I want to keep, I put them on Instagram so that I don't lose them so that they're in some public location that is not on my computer. So I do that. And other than that, I do make a few photo books per year. And sometimes I will upload the Flickr. I used to upload to Flickr a lot more, but now I've just, I upload to my blog and I upload to Instagram and that's really it. And I figure at least I have a record on my blog and on Instagram. Um, something is better than nothing. Your best tip for managing multiple home businesses, please. Um, do you have to have multiple home businesses? That would be my best tip uh, because I feel like sometimes it's, you know, if you could just focus on one thing, if you could just focus on one business and throw all of your effort into that one business versus trying to have multiple businesses, that if that is possible, that's always going to be the easiest. Um, for me, really streamlining and focusing on, okay, I'm gonna put all of my efforts into one instead of, you know, I used to have three blogs and a lot of other things going on, so really streamlining. We also have a, um, a rental property business, but my husband runs all of that. So I don't do anything other than I go and see the property and I'm the one who kind of does the final walkthrough and we both decide on the price um, that we're gonna offer. But other than that, I really hands off. I sign the papers, so that's it. Um, so how did your writing style improve? You mentioned before it wasn't so good when you started. Um, I think the best thing for improving as a writer is to just write and critique your own work and then ask other people to critique your work. So ask other people to give you their honest, honest opinion. Um, in the With my last two books, what I did is before I submitted my manuscript to the publisher, I sent the manuscript to five to seven people who I knew would be extremely honest with me. And I asked them, I said, basically, I want you to rip this manuscript apart. And I have learned so much by that critique because um, that has helped me to see where certain things that I say all the time, like for instance, I would always write towards with an S instead of toward. There are so many things like that. I would use which instead of that. You can pick out a lot of things that you, that those are your mistakes that you make a lot by having that. Um, and then just write and surround yourself with good writing. I try to read from a wide variety of books and when I'm reading, I try to analyze the book to say, what are they doing that's hooking me? Why am I enjoying this book? Why am I not enjoying this book? Why am I getting caught up in the story? What are they doing? So analyzing it to say, what can I learn from reading this book to make me a better writer? My throat is so dry today, I don't know what why? Okay, do you suggest someone with a service using it as opposed to a blog or book? Um, I think that you could use it for any kind of business, but I do feel like it would be better if your service is something that you could sell to people on the internet, then yes, definitely. If your service is something local, I think long term, there's a lot of potential for Periscope local services, but I think you would be better spending your time um, advertising locally. Instagram is a great way to advertise locally because you can use hashtags with your city and your state to try to draw people from your local area to Instagram. So I would say put your efforts somewhere else if it's not a service that people on the internet are going to be able to buy. Because it's more so, 
I just feel like it's Periscope is for the internet. What was the new book? Um, Money Making Mom. It comes out November 3rd, and it is How Every Woman Can Earn More and Make a Difference. And this book is really uh, for women who you have a bunch of ideas and you don't know how to get started with them, and you need a step-by-step -step plan and somebody to hold your hand and walk you through how to start, how to execute on those ideas and give you inspiration and motivation to get started. Or you would love to get started, but you don't have many ideas that so this book is for both so I'm gonna help you to find and uncover and discover your gifts and your passions and your skills and your talents and how can you meld those into a business or some way to make money that's going to bless your family and then how do you set that up is there still room on your book launch team um the book launch team filled up really quickly um, so you can send a note through our contact form and ask but we were really, we're full up and people needed to have already read the book because now there's a lot of stuff that they're, they're helping out with because they've, they've read the book. But I know it was, I, I, I did do a scope about it, but then, um, I just did a post and we didn't advertise it a whole lot because it filled up. How do you spend your evening after 630? Um, you pre-ordered a while ago. Thank you so much. Okay. After 630, it's. It's a little bit different every night, but um, recently I've been having to work a little bit in the evenings because of book launch stuff. I've been having interviews in the afternoon, so I've had to, my work is spilled over a little bit into evening, which is not what I like, but it's book launch and um, that's just what it is. But uh, so once I'm done with working, then it's dinner and hang out as a family. We're, we're super... Um, we're super chill at our house, <laughs> so we don't usually do much stuff in the evenings. We really just hang out. My husband and I might watch um, an episode of West Wing. I might read. We might. We just. We like to hang out, so we'll just hang out and talk. And sometimes we watch silly YouTube videos, or we talk about different subjects, or we talk about politics. Um, but just hang out for two or three hours, and then go to bed. So yeah, not, not super exciting, but I do have a bedtime routine that's super simple um, that I do follow that it's just like take my contacts out, wash my face, take my pills, um, and just try to shut off all the electronics and the computer. I try to kind of have space between when I'm done with business and then when I'm going to bed so that my brain is not swirling with things. Do you have another book in the works? No. I don't. Um, I don't know if there will be another book. I know that we have a lot of products that are in the works for 2016 as far as downloadable products, um, similar to something like uh, Make Over Your Mornings or some that aren't video but just downloadable products. Um, we have those in the works, but right now I just have to focus on Money Making Mom. I have to do one thing at a time. I'm not one of those authors that can write four books in a year and launch them. I just can't. One one thing at a time. Trim Healthy Mama, do I recommend it? I do recommend it if you need to lose weight. I had to quit because I could not keep enough weight on. And um, I, I'm at like kind of the bottom weight that I can be at to be at a healthy weight. And I was losing, I was struggling to keep, keep at that weight. So I had to had to quit. Um, but if you are struggling to lose weight, I highly recommend checking it out because it it definitely works and it's worked for a lot of people that I know. So um, yeah, so that's, I, I guess it worked too well for me. I don't know. When do you find time to read? Um, I do uh, the majority of my reading on Sundays. So if I have a free Sunday afternoon, usually um, two, at least two Sundays a month, I will have a completely free Sunday afternoon and I will have maybe three hours and I just check out and I read and that's what I read. And then also in little snippets here and there. So like this book that I read this week, um, I read it over the course of a few evenings and then a few snippets during the day, but mostly um, weekends and a little bit in the evenings. I don't have set set times that I always read, but if you go to moneysavingmom.com, um, you can search for when you find time to read, and there are many different, I've done maybe five or six different posts on when I find time to read, and it's at different seasons of life. Right now, um, I'm 
that's what's working for me, it'll change, but I always just make sure that it's happening every week. Do your kids play sports? Yes, um, all three of them. Uh, that is one thing when we were, um, when we moved to Nashville from Kansas, we wanted our kids to get plugged in. Um, pretty quickly because it was a hard move for them. And so Catherine, our oldest, she's 10, she is on swim team. It's a homeschool swim team and they um, have practices three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then they have meets usually once every, I would say four to six weeks on a Saturday. And then Caitlin is, um, she's our eight year old and she's our ice skater. Um, she's currently taking a little bit of a breather where she, she was, um, she's in private coaching and um, she was being doing a lot of lessons and coaching and um, different trampoline work and that all that and she kind of got a little bit burned out and so um, my husband is the one who's works with the coaches on that and they've had some discussions recently and felt like she needed to take a, a break because that we don't want her to burn out um, and so she's just down to doing um, one to two coaching lessons a week and um, that's we feel like that's been good and that's going to bring the spark back for her because she really loves it. She just was doing it so much and she's burned out because she's eight. And then Silas, our six-year-old, he is um, does baseball and he is a huge baseball fanatic. Um, so, oh, thank you. A scope on how you do your hair and makeup. Well, guess what? Um, on Catch, on my Catch account, if you go to K-A-T-C-H dot me forward slash money saving mom, I have a tutorial that I did because so many people ask for it, which cracks me up. So I share, I don't, it's not exactly a tutorial, but I share all the makeup I use, kind of how I use it. And then I um, shared a little bit about how I do my hair. So um, I'm very simple in that I do pretty much the same thing every single day. Thank you, Cynthia. The same thing every single day. And so I'm kind of like, get what works and stick with it. How do you keep your energy daily and throughout the day? Um, did I say that I did? <laughs> no. Um, last night I went to bed really early because I was so tired. Um, so how do I keep my energy? I think it's uh, a couple things that I, I am a morning person, so I try to get the most stuff done in the mornings, the most important stuff done in the mornings, so that if I'm tired by 4 or 6 or 8 p.m., I don't have to um, feel stressed about the fact that I have so much more to do. Um, and I think eating well, exercising, drinking, trying to get at least seven hours of sleep, um, and having, having things to wake up to that you love doing, and people in your life who are life-giving. That, um, that's really what I feel like gives me a lot of energy, and so people who I can go to when I'm saying, I'm having a hard day, and I need some encouragement, or um, sometimes when I'm feeling burned out, and then they can help me troubleshoot to say, you're doing too much of this, or you need to pull back on this, or are you getting enough sleep, or are you taking care of yourself? So I have people in my life who help to make sure that I take care of myself, which is such a blessing. How do you make homeschooling work? Do you both teach, and how many hours does that take each day? Great question. Um, so I homeschool in the mornings, and that's usually, so I'm in charge of like the nine to noon time, and um, I we are doing Sunlight, um, their core curriculum, which is um, history, geography, a little bit of um, handwriting and language arts, and uh, Bible, scripture memory, and I'm, I think I'm forgetting something. Now I can't think. Um, I think that's mostly all of it. And oh, and read alouds um, and reading. So I'm in charge of that. And so that's in the morning. And then in the afternoon, my husband is in charge of um, the afternoon school and their activities that are in the afternoon. And so that is from noon to 3.34. Um, and then they, so they have independent work that they do. And and then they have work time where they work with me, time where they work with Jesse, and he does Monarch, um, which is an online um, program, and um, it's through Alpha Omega, and that they do science, language arts, and math. He gets all the more challenging subjects, or the subjects that I don't enjoy. He gets to do them, and he actually loves them. Okay, what book are we reading? We are reading, we just started, and it's with Sunlight, and it's something... I cannot think of the title. I will have to tell you. Um, it's a weird title, and I was kind of not sure 
what it was going to be. It was one I never heard of. I'll have to, I will have to look that up. Does Jesse work outside the home full time? No, he's home full time. Um, we work in our, um, we work in business. We have a real estate business and, um, we, so we own and, uh, we own rental properties and he runs all of that. And then, um, money saving mom and, um, I run mostly run Money Saving Mom, but he does all the legal, financial, and business stuff. So anytime there's a lot of times we have contract negotiation or um, he needs if there's a kind of business or financial meeting, he's always a part of that. He takes care of all of our payroll and finances, working with our accountant and our CPA and taxes and all of that. So um, that's what that's what he does. So um, it works out well. We were talking this morning about how we're, we are a true team when it comes to breadwinning and when it comes to homeschooling. And I never would have seen that this is how our life would be, but it's worked out so well for this season of life and we love it. it there are hard days, don't get me wrong, but um, we love it and we're just so grateful to have made the decisions when we were early on in marriage to not get into debt, to be very frugal, to be careful, to um, learn about entrepreneurial things because um, it, it allowed us to be where we are today. Someone asked the difference between book writing and blog writing. Um, this, is, this is an issue that a lot of bloggers turned authors struggle with, and I know I struggle with because we're so used to thinking in blog posts instead of in an overarching sort of theme. And so um, I, when I wrote my first book, it was really kind of this compilation of blog posts and I was just trying to pull from blog posts. And instead of starting with an outline and saying, okay, what, how am I going to build the structure and the bones of this book? And so building the bones first in, and at the big picture level, instead of saying, oh, well, I'll use this blog post for this chapter, or this or this or this. Um, so starting with a big picture, I think that is really the difference. Then the other thing is that you are thinking someone who's reading your book, they're not reading in little snippets. I mean, they might be, but if they pick up your book, you're going to assume that they're going to hopefully try to read the whole thing versus if they come to your blog post, they might only read one little blog post. So in a book, you can build on each chapter. And so it, allow, it allows you to kind of be able to marinate on subjects a little bit more than you would be able to do in a blog post. And you can also use longer paragraphs, which you can't do on the internet, and you can um, have much longer chapters. Although I, I think there's a trend more to shorter chapters now, and I think that's because of the internet, and I think it's because people's attention span is shorter. And so I think that's why there's kind of this trend towards books with shorter chapters. Do you use the same Sunlight Core for all your kids? Yes, we do. When we were looking in Sunlight, we're, using, we're on Core D right now, um, which is Intro to American History, Intro to U.S. History. Yes, um, I think. I think that's what it is. I'm, I'm see, this is why I don't speak on homeschooling. Um, I love it, but I'm not, I'm not the one who should be speaking on. Okay, so, um, I, we use Core D and when I, we were looking at the possibility of doing sunlight, I went to one of the homeschool conferences and I sat down with the lady and I said, I really, 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 really love the idea of sunlight, but I just don't think there's any way that I can do it with my kids because they're 10, 8, and 6. And so she, we talked about what grade levels they were in and what um, their kind of comprehension level was. And she said, I think, I think you can. So, so we went with Core D and it has done, we have just loved, we've loved it. It's worked so well for our family. And I love that all three of the kids are loving it together. They don't always get everything. And some of it is like below my 10 year old's level. And some of it is above my six year old's level but they're all learning a lot from it. And they, I love how it, it fosters all these conversations. We're studying about the Mayans and the Incans um, right now. And um, especially the Mayans, we're doing the Mayans, and um, they have just loved reading about this, which cracks me up because I'm like, okay, um, all of the different things that their beliefs and um, their sacrifices and all of that, but they just found it very intriguing. And then we've talked about why, why do you think people would believe that and do that? So what I still recommend Periscope if you can't scope at the same time every day. Um, great question, Carolyn. Um, I, I think you totally can. I think if you were, were, if you scope consistently, so it's kind of the same thing with, um, blogging where if you 
you know, blog really consistently for six weeks and then you fall off the planet for six weeks, that's not a recipe for success. I think it's the same with scope. I was watching a scope from somebody the other day and he was talking about how, and it was someone who didn't have a huge following. It was a smaller scoper. And, but I found it very fascinating because he said he went off of scope for two weeks. Um, and then when he came back on, his numbers had been really good because he built up to that level. He was consistently scoping almost every single day. And then he went off of scope for two weeks and didn't scope because he was busy. And when he came back, he had a really hard time getting anybody to come to his scope. And he, he had a decent number of followers. So I thought that was interesting. And I really feel like it, it does kind of prove that, um, scoping regularly is, the consistency is what is going to bring and attract the people. So I don't think you need to do it at the same time every day, but I think that consistency is good. And that reminds me before I forget, this afternoon I said I was going to do a scope and it asked me anything. I can't do it at three because I am taking Catherine to her swimming um, <coughs> because Jesse's busy this afternoon. So um, I am going to, I think I'll be back by 3.30 or 3.45. So we're going to start it at 3.30 or 3.45. Just going to give you the heads up on that. So um, if anybody wondered where I was at 3 p.m., I am going to be driving back from swimming. So <clears throat> and then let's see, was there one other thing? Oh, I know what. I was going to ask you all if you had topics that you would love for me to scope about. Um, I would love for suggestions. I'm getting lots of suggestions for the business and blogging, but I'd love suggestions um, for just the regular morning scopes if you have anything that you'd love for me to cover. Or you know, if you say, I'd love to see more of this. Um, Bible for kids seven to 10. Um, I, I don't, that's, that's a good question. I think it would really depend upon your child and what their, their level of understanding and, um, retention and that sort of thing. Um, we've done, we have done, uh, we use ESV mostly at our house. And so our kids have started with like a, more of a kid's Bible that was, I think it was, oh, I can't even, it's whatever comes with sunlight and my father's world. I can't think what it is. But, um, and then kind of when they get to the level where we feel like they um, are understanding it more, then we'll get them like their nice ESV Bible. Um, and that's always like so exciting to them. Like we got, I got to graduate to the, to the big kid Bible, the beginner's Bible. Is that a good one? Um, how do you protect your privacy being a popular blogger? Um, I, we have a lot of different things that we put in place that, um, I can't really talk about because if I told you, then it would uh, not protect our privacy. But um, I will tell you that we are 100% honest with what we put out there, but there's a lot of stuff we don't put out there in order to protect our privacy. And I always tell people to be so careful what you put out on the internet, especially in the form of pictures or location, because um, I, I think so many people don't think about that they're showing their house, they're showing their neighborhood, and then they'll say that they're out of town, and then or a woman that will talk about her husband being out of town, or a husband that will post on Instagram and say he's out of town when he's already posted pictures of his house and said that he lives in this town. And so we just have to be, um, you just have to be careful. Just it's always err on the side of caution, and if you're not completely sure, then. Um, just be careful. So when do you know when to give up on a blog? Um, I think that you can know if by a few things. One, is your heart still in it? Um, giving up is not necessarily that you're failing. It's that you've discovered that there's something else that's working better for you. So I have given up a lot of things over the course of being a business owner and an entrepreneur because I realized that wasn't the best thing for me right now at this season. So it's not me failing. It's me saying I'm going to move on to something else because um, kind of the trajectory of where I'm headed is changing. So I think start with where's your heart? Um, what are you passionate about? Um, are you are you tired of it and you do you want to move on to something else? What have you learned enough from it that you feel like okay now it's time 
to put that learning into something else? Or do you feel like you're seeing some small fruit and you're still passionate about it and you're, you're still learning and growing and so you want to stick with it? I think it's, you know, just really examining your heart and if you're burned out on it and you feel like it's going nowhere and your heart's not in it, at least take a break from it. Step back and take a break because that's a great way to then determine was your heart really in it or were you just doing it because you felt like you had to because you started it and you didn't want to be a quitter. So it can be good to be a quitter if you're quitting in order to do something better. How to manage Christmas with your children. Um, we are, we'll decide what we're going to do um, this year. Kind of every year we do it a little bit different and just kind of seeing where our kids are at. Last year we really simplified Christmas, really simplified it. And um, it worked really well and it was, a, it was a, a good season for us to just really focus on the most important priorities. But my kids also, and my husband and I, we missed some of our um, kind of staple traditions. And so we'll probably bring some of those back this year. So we'll see. We just, we take it year by year. I'm one of those people that don't, uh, I don't ever want to get in a box and feel like you always have to do the same thing. So do something different. If something's not working or you want to try something new, you can change it. You don't have to always do the same thing. How do you emotionally manage blocking trolls? Um, <laughs> You do a party for Jesus. I love that. Uh, the trolls, honestly, I don't really like to talk about them because I feel like when I talk about them, it just helps them to want to come out and make the presence known. But I will tell you that they don't bother me. I mean, every once in a while someone will say something. I think my hardest thing is sometimes they'll say something and I'm not sure. Was that a legit or was somebody being snarky? Um, and I know that they bother um, the viewers and I always feel badly about that, especially when I'm just talking, talking, and not paying attention, um, and so I, um, I, they do, like, not, they don't block me, I, they don't bother me, no, I just, I just said that, they don't bother me in the sense that they don't get to me, um, and I think it's because years of writing a blog, I've seen pretty much every comment under the sun, and so it doesn't, it doesn't bother me when it's an anonymous person on the internet who you know that they just go around and do this. I will say I think that there's a, um, it's an emotional sort of thing where like as far as um, there's some kind of high or um, some unhealthy sort of thing that they get from being acknowledged. And so that's why if you don't acknowledge the trolls and you don't pay attention to them, then I feel like you're not feeding them. So I try not to feed the trolls, um, but every once in a while I, I feel really badly because there will be bad words and there will be different things and I um, am trying to block and talk at the same time. So, and I and I feel badly for you guys to have to see it, but you can always turn off the comments so that you don't see them. Um, but like, I feel bad because some people are like, I can't have my kids around when you're scoping. And I'm like, I know, I'm so sorry. There's, we were, we actually tried Mackenzie Monroe. She told me that um, I could maybe, um, my husband could log in on um, my account on his phone and he would be able to block from so that I wouldn't have to worry about blocking but we tried that and what happened I don't know something weird was happening and so then it wasn't he would block them but then they would come unblocked and so we couldn't figure out what was going on with that so we finally just decided I'll just block them and then I always watch the replay and block them and just it is what it is, and I'm sorry. So at least you don't have to see them on my blog, and I usually can delete them pretty quickly on my Facebook, but it's part of the internet. So I think just, um, yeah, you just it's, it's part of the deal of putting yourself out there. But if you can remember that um, they're pretty much just an anonymous person who they want to stir up trouble, then you just, the time management tip was at the beginning. So if you want to go back and watch the replay, it was right at the beginning. Um, so, so anyway, that is, I don't even know how long we went. We went a long time, I think, but you all kept um, sticking around. So it was great to get to chat with you all more than, um, than usual. I love getting to chat with you. And I hope that you have a great day. And remember that I will be back here um, around 3.30, 3.45 to do a Money Making Mom Scope where we'll be doing Ask Me Anything. Um, on business and blogging and I will be giving away a copy of my new book money-making mom so you won't want to miss that so thanks so much and I'll see you